In this video I'll talk about setting up ID map in Houdini. I will show different ways that you can do that with different kind of geometry. So now we start just with the let's say you have imported it inside the Houdini and you have this one node and this node has different pieces of geometry and this let's say you want to add materials, different material for these things or like this, I know what it's called, like legs and the body. So how can we set that up? Well, let's start with some of the easiest way. So, when you're in a viewport, you see that there is a display group not to keep list, which is this box. Go here, select the points. So, it's going to then go to the point selection. You see now you can select the points. But I want to go, go to this and 3D connectivity. So, now in the point selection, you see that it's going to select the whole connected geometry. So, let's say you want to give this its own material so we select this legs group create group let's call it legs now just go back to the point selection and do the same for fins create a fins I don't even know maybe it's a little too and I have no idea so now we have two groups that we can color in differently and for body, we don't actually have to do anything because that's going to give its own color. So how can we add color? For color, we just add color node. We can just select random from attribute. And if you leave it attribute empty, it's going to randomize any color. Just change the seed. So for that, we can just duplicate it. And then just pipe it into the next one and in the group we want to select fins and randomize the seed for the fins and then just do the same and for the legs and delete the fins like that so now we have three colors for everything that we want to add materi material for different kinds of parts of this rubber duct let's take a look at another sample so i have done here is given each one of these legs its own group front right front left bottom right left bottom left so let's say you want all the right legs selected so what we can do in a color node put down in asterisk word right what is going to do go through all our groups and gonna find word right and if you want, and if you change something like in here, like now it's going to be not selected. So it has to be right anywhere in the group. So let's say we want all the bottom ones. Let's put down the bottom. Like that. So the asterisk between both, in both sides is going to mean it's going to look in every in all of the name in all of the name of the groups so if we want only the start of it we have to put down without the asterisk so only the bottom so if you now we have only bottom with the an asterisk at the end and if we put down a bottom here it's not going to be picked up because it's not in front of the group name but if you put down a asterisk vaccine it's going to be selected so I hope that makes a little bit more clear about that. And also there's a great read in a group segment in a help manual that goes through the group syntax. It's very useful. Now I want to talk a little bit about the negatives of this method. So in this method, what we are doing in groups, actually selecting the point numbers of these of this geometry so whenever we change the geometry on top of it the points are going to shuffle around and the group is not going to be right well for this instance let's say we want just to take out id map we can presume that you have geometry already made and you're not going to change it when you're going to take it out so this method it can work so but one 
okay i'm just going to demonstrate it so let's let's go back to the top of the shape and let's say i'm going to extrude these faces so now there's more points and what's going to happen with our groups let's select our group so this group this seems fine for now but in this group you can see oh actually the extrude went down to the, this one oh, my bad so let's see you extrude these faces and the very first group like that is all messed up the points are not where they should be and they are all shuffled around so what we can do is not to select the point numbers but we actually can put down a connectivity node so in connectivity put it to the point and in a, this you can get that field it's going to be by default class and you can see it's going to give every just like the way we 3d connected geometry in here it's going to give a unique number for each one of these groups of geometries so let's say we go back to his and let's reselect it and when you have this class let's just select these two and press enter now in the base group there's actually two and zero and now let's select this one and let's select these two I delete this and this two so now we have a group based on not of the point numbers but of this attribute and what we can do let's go to the top of it and extrude it like that and now if we go back to the, our groups you can see that the groups have stayed intact they do not shuffle around so this is just a way to make it easier if you do want to change the geometry later on of course if you're gonna add the more geometry then the classes could be changed but if you just want to modify the existing geometry it's going to be a lot easier to work with the groups that way one thing I wanted to show with this connectivity node is that the order in which you put in the geometry matters so let's say we're gonna put down a box now let's put down also normal because it's going to be black and because I have done this before so in the merge node you can see that our rubber toy is the first input and the box is the second one and as you remember we did this extrude with this rubber toy so we want it in the merge node be the first one so so when we put it inside here <coughs> you can see that point number are not changed because these points for the box you can take a look are going the very are going to be the last ones that be being changed so in here you can see that it's just five four and like that but in the merge all of these points are this is the second point second input are being thrown to the back with so the extrude is not changed because point point numbers have not been changed so and if we and now let's just do the let's put down the box first and then the rubber toy you can see that our extrude has completely gone wrong so if you merge remember to make it be the first input geometry that you have done with this and also you can see that our connectivity node now the zero is given to the box and not the so let's just take a look at this so you can see that zero is for the box and our and you can I well guess that our groups are not going to be correct so if you take a look at this front leg button now it selected the, the bottom leg and the box so that's not correct so but if we change the order of it now our extrude is right and also our correct connectivity has not been changed because box has given the very last 10 numbers so our 
groups are also correct so that's one thing to keep in mind when working with connectivity now. Now let's take a look at another setup. So let's say we are happy with this ID map setup and let's say we have more details. So what I have done here, duplicated some box and the tube. So let's say one tube in a one color and a, these objects in a different one. So what we can do with the ID map, with connected map, it can be a little tedious to pick every one of them. So what we can do, just right before the merge, we can put down a attribute create node. Let's call it my colors. I'm gonna copy it. So make sure it's the point, and it can be in danger. It doesn't really matter. Let's put it to the one value, and now let's just, let's just duplicate it and put it inside here. Let's put it to the two. And now in the merge, you can see that we have in a point. There are my colors. There is one, and there's two. So why we did that? So what we can do now? Just put down a, another color node. Go to the random from attribute, and if you want put down the attribute our is my uh, custom color so which I just copied so I just put down my custom colors as you can see that it's going to randomize based on the attribute and since our attribute 1 and 2 whatever there is one there's going to give one color and the other one is going to because they match the randomization is going to be the same for all the objects and that's how you can give color IDs for the different objects and now and of course because it is a CD attribute you can just match them together let's put on normal you can match them together and it's going to work if you want to UV this and bake out ID map also what's good about this method is that you just want for each one of these objects its own color you can just put down a connectivity node make sure it's on a point and with this attribute class in the colors instead of our attribute just put down a class it's going to give a random color to each one of these objects so if your object is not that complex you can just put down this and be basically be done with it so now let's take a look at actual baking so what we want to do is before one before we create the ID map, let's explode this mesh so, do, so that the part do, part do not intersect something like this now let's put down a lab simple baker this one is the mantra one so make sure you have this t-shirt on and you can see that there's option for vertex color so just deselect normal map and use the base color you can see that I have already something baked out in here the mother, from other object first I'm going to make sure I have a project folder set up so I know where to find my map and basically all you have to do is make sure you they do not intersect and just press on render once you're done with baking it took around 30 seconds let's disable the explode view mesh you can see in a map that we had just baked out we have all these parts separated now let's go into the substance painter and take a look how can we set it up there in substance painter let's import our id map so i just like to drop it in here texture this current session and now in the mesh maps just drop it inside the id selection and now let's maybe Bake out other maps except for these into 2K so that our smart materials are actually getting something. So let's put let's put down some smart material, maybe something like this. And now we can put just put down a black mask and add the color selection. 
now with the pick color with the pick color you can see we can select only this one pick another color now let's put down this one let's do this the same thing oops let's pick maybe these parts you can see we have easily set up our ID map for the easy material assignment. One last thing I wanted to add is if you want to just export the FBX and bake out ID map in something like Substance, it's very easy to do. So make sure in a connectivity it's point. Uh, once you have color assigned, make sure it's a point class. And then just F export it as FBX. And in Substance Painter, you can see when you press Auto Bake, just put an ID, use the vertex color, and just bake it out. You can see they are basically, they are basically the same colors, this pink and green, as in Houdini. So I hope you found this video useful. Take care and see you next time.